You know, I was talking to somebody the other day regarding uh, the uh, coronavirus epidemic that we're right now going through. And of course, I've heard this from numerous people. They believe that uh, this epidemic is a worldwide hoax or some type of a conspiracy theory that uh, simply doesn't exist, but it's being used to place martial law on people worldwide. And of course, people are going to believe what they want to believe, but this is no conspiracy theory. And this is no attempt to uh, place martial law upon the world. But what it is, is straight out of the Bible where it says that there would be earthquakes in diverse places. There would be plagues, pestilence, wars and rumors of wars. And, you know, there's uh, many other uh, signs that also are converging, such as Israel becoming a nation again, the last generation, Jerusalem becoming Israel's capital again, and the property of Israel. Certainly we can't forget about the peace accord that is trying to be uh, established in the Middle East. Of course, that's been put on hold until this uh, virus has been defeated, and it will be defeated. And certainly we can't forget about uh, Russia, uh, Iran, and Turkey being now in a position to attack Israel, which is described in Ezekiel 38. Of course, these are just converging signs that are taking place at the same time. And you know, while we've been keen on this one particular sign of the end time, there was another, you know, there's others that have been taking place and went virtually unnoticed that happened yesterday. And that's why I want to encourage you to go to my website and look at the daily news that I put out on things that are specific to Bible prophecy. And here's the headline. It says that a strong earthquake rocked Croatia, causing widespread panic and damage in the capital. And the article states that some casualties were reported. It was measured at 5.3. And this was a very damaging earthquake. And it wasn't the only earthquake that took place. There's been a number of earthquakes that have taken place over the last seven days. And they are virtually all over the world. And at the same time, there's another potential catastrophe that could uh, really grip the United States uh, in, the, in, the, in the months to come. And that is the falling prices of the, the uh, oil industry. Right now, Russia and Saudi Arabia, the two biggest uh, oil producers outside the United States, are in a battle, a showdown, as to who's going to blink first. Both are allowing the uh, price of crude oil to drop. And if you've been out uh, and got gas, you know that it's really got down about as low as we've seen it in years. Well, that's bad news for the shale oil industry here in America. So that's something you need to keep your eyes on because that's a double whammy for us. Not only are we dealing with the coronavirus, but we're also dealing with possibly having to bail out not only the airline industry, the cruise ship industry, and also now possibly the oil industry here in America. And, you know, speaking of bailing out the industries of the different uh, financial sectors in the world, the European Union is also bringing about their own stimulus package, uh, similar to what the United States is doing, or at least will do. And here's a, an article coming out of uh, Stratford. It says, Europe moves to keep its economy afloat. And just to give you the highlights, on it says the European Central Bank augmented its 30 billion euro a month program of quantitative easing with a uh, pandemic emergency purchase program to buy an additional 750 billion euros or 800 billion dollars in uh, member country sovereign and corporate bonds until the COVID-19 crisis is over. So Europe's doing pretty much the same thing. And the reason why that's important is because at some point in time, uh, the Bible says that there will arise out of the European Union or the, or the re- new revived Roman Empire, Ten nations who will take on a leader and lend their power to him. And as we know, there are a lot more countries in the European Union than just ten. So at some point in time, you have to wonder when that is going to break off from the European Union and become its own group of uh, ten nations. And, you know, we find that a, a prominent discussion both in uh, Daniel 7, 24 and Revelation chapter 17. So at some point in time, this will happen. And, of course, we know that there's something else that hasn't happened yet that must happen at least by the midway point of the tribulation period, and that is the creation of the temple. Now, certainly, that's probably the last thing on anyone's mind right now if, in fact, the temple is ever going to be rebuilt. We know that it will, as we know that at some point in time, this ten-nation kingdom will come together and will place their uh, trust and their power in the hands of the Antichrist. But, of course, that is still; those two items are still yet future. 
And that's something, again, that would be another converging event, both of those events, if that were to take place in this last generation right now as we're, we're as Christians that we're still here. You know, getting back to this uh, problem, this international virus that's spreading, there's one major player that really hasn't uh, had much to say about it, and we haven't uh, really spent much time on it, and that's Russia. In fact, in a headline, it says the Russian government has been confident to the point of boastful in ensuring its citizens and the world that the coronavirus is virtually non-existent within its borders. But the Russian people are skeptical with good reason. And, you know, the reason why that's the case is because much of uh, Russia's border is, is butted up against China. And there's a lot of free roaming back and forth between the two nations because Russia does rely upon migrant workers from that area. And here's something you may not know. There is an astonishing amount of Chinese tourists that visit uh, Russia's two main cities, which is Moscow and St. Petersburg. And the number hasn't changed. They're still coming in in the same amount as before the virus started. And reading from the article, it says, When airlines all over the world stopped service to China, Russia's Aeroflop continued to fly to Beijing, possibly for political reasons. A senior Russian official who asked to uh, remain anonymous told me that on, very, on every fast train between Moscow and St. Petersburg, a line that uh, carries thousands of passengers, more than half the uh, passengers are Chinese tourists. There are more than 10 of these trains in each direction each day, so draw your own conclusions. And let's stop figuring about Russia's uh, subway system, which services up to 9 million people a day. And again, nothing's changed as far as the day-to-day -day operation of that. But I'm sure we'll never know the exact figures coming out of either Russia or uh, uh, Iran or any other nation who has refused to uh, get help from outside sources. But where is the United States right now in all of this race to get well and to get the economy back on, uh, back on track? Now, here's an article that's coming out of the L.A. Times where a, a uh, Stanford biophysicist, Michael Levette, he's a Nobel laureate, states that he sees a different ending to this uh, coronavirus epidemic, and I have a, I kind of have, have to agree with him. And this, may, this article may take a little bit of uh, time, but I think it's important that you hear what he has to say. Michael Levitt, a Nobel laureate and Stanford biophysicist, began analyzing the uh, number of COVID-19 cases worldwide in January and correctly calculated that China would get through the worst of its uh, coronavirus outbreak long before many health expert experts had predicted. Now he foresees a similar outcome for the United States and the rest of the world. While many are warning of months or even years of uh, massive social disruption and millions of deaths, Levitt says the data simply don't support such a dire scenario, especially in areas where reasonable social distancing measures are in place. What we need is to control the panic, and I agree with that completely. In the grand scheme, we're going to be fine. But you can thank the media for that. Uh, they are completely out of control and are milking this epidemic to the final drop. But going on with the article, it says, Here's what Levitt noticed in China. On January the 31st, the uh, country had 46 new deaths due to the novel, or novel coronavirus, compared with 42 new deaths the day before. Although the number of daily deaths had increased, the rate of that increase had begun to ease off. In his view, the fact that new cases were being identified at a slower rate was more telling than the number of new cases itself. It was an early sign that the trajectory of the outbreak had shifted. This suggests that the uh, rate of increase in a number of deaths will slow down even more over the next week, Levitt wrote in a report he sent to uh, friends February 1 that uh, was widely shared on Chinese social media. And soon he predicted the number of deaths would be decreasing every day. Now, three weeks later, Levitt told the China, China Daily News that the virus's rate of growth had peaked. He predicted that the total number of uh, confirmed COVID-19 cases in China would uh, end up around 80,000 with about 3,250 deaths. This forecast turned out to be remarkably accurate. As of March 16th, China had counted a total of 80,298 cases and 3,245 deaths. 
and that's in a nation of nearly 1.4 billion people where roughly 10 million die every year. The number of newly diagnosed patients has dropped uh, to around 25 a day with no cases of community spread reported since Wednesday. Nalavet, who uh, received the 2013 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for developing complex models of a chemical systems of chemical systems, is seeing similar turning points in other nations, even ones that did not instill the draconian isolation measures that China did. He analyzed the uh, data from 78 countries and that reported more than 50 case, new cases of uh, COVID-19 every day and sees signs of recovery in many of them. He's not focusing on the total number of cases in a country, but on the number of new cases identified every day, and especially on the percentage growth in that number from one day to the next. Numbers are still noisy, but there are clear signs of slowed growth. So that's something I start looking for as the numbers start to come in from uh, various parts of the world and also in the United States. And I think you're going to see the amount of daily deaths going down over the next week. And of course, we are in the second week of uh, this 15-day federal mandate to get the, get the nation well. And of course, it's being rumored that by tomorrow there will be an anti-malaria drug plus another cocktail that will go along with it that has seen promising results in France will be being used on people who are quite ill. And as I said, it's being said that it's going to probably start tomorrow. They're going to start implementing this drug combination. So let's wait and see if that uh, combination will put a dent in the number of deaths and also the number of uh, people who are recovering from this virus. So to sum all this up, uh, we're not to use this virus as a scare tactic to uh, make people believe that the end of the world is going to take place. Now, of course, I do believe Bible prophecy states in the last days, the last generation, that a number of converging signs will come together to give people and especially the church, a watchful eye as to where they are in Bible prophecy. Now, you remember, Hebrews 10, 20, 25 says that we should be in church more as we see the day coming. And that day coming, I believe, is the rapture of the church. So there will be a generation who will see the day coming, and I believe how they will see that day coming is through the convergence of these signs. But no, I am definitely not on the bandwagon of every time a catastrophic event takes place such as this, that we are automatically uh, to assume that the rapture of the church is going to take place. But I am looking around and I am seeing a lot of different converging signs that are coming together all at this one time. But I think it's more important to look at it as a sign to Christians and to non-Christians alike that the rapture could be imminent. And certainly I do not believe that God has any intention of hiding that from the general public. But I don't believe that we should cry wolf every time some situation takes place. So let's try to keep an eye on this and see exactly what happens. I do believe that it's certainly got the world's attention. And as Christians uh, in, this, in these last days, we should continue to look up and look to the Bible as our guide. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day that you need to get saved. You know, there will be 150,000 people that will die today. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. That's simply a mistake that you don't want to make. So I would certainly encourage you to come to the Lord today, ask Him to forgive you for your sins, believe that He died for those sins, accept Him as your Savior, and from this day forward, live for Him. And you that are Christians, you need to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. You know there's going to be loved ones and friends that are going to be left behind, and you need a copy of my book in their hands at whatever the cost or however you may be able to do it. So I'd encourage you to go down to the description section of this video and get your copy today. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.